So this is a very easy concept to understand and a very simple diagram. So this is your crankshaft at the bottom and these are your cylinder bores. Haven't run any pistons yet. Um, and these black circles are your crank pin. So this is TDC, so zero degrees. This is 90 degrees. And this is 180 degrees. So I'm gonna ask a very simple question. When the crank is at TDC, Where's your piston? Your piston is at TDC. So right there at the top, I'm just gonna draw the top of the piston for simplicity's sake. And then when your crank is at the bottom of the stroke, well, I just gave it away there. Where's your piston? It's at the bottom of the stroke, so it's at BDC. Now, when your crankshaft is at 90 degrees, where's your piston? Is it halfway up the board because the crank is halfway rotated? The answer is no, you're wrong. The piston's actually, this is the piston and then this is the halfway point. So your piston's actually slightly below the halfway point despite it being at 90 degrees. It actually has to be at 80 something to be in the middle. And why is that? That doesn't make any sense. Think about it this way. Your connecting rod is actually at an angle here. So if your rod was straight, the piston would be right dead in the middle of the cylinder, but it's not. So what does this have to do with engine vibration? So here's another diagram to relate that to vibration and make it more clear if you haven't figured it out already. So here is a typical four cylinder. Um, this is how the crank is laid out. So two up, two down. So zero degrees, 180, 180. So simply, our pistons are here. So TDC and then TDC, VDC, VDC. So very simple. Now let's pretend this crank is rotating clockwise. So clockwise 90 degrees. So we have this crank pin now goes to here and this crank pin goes to here and so forth. This is 90, 90, 90, 90. So what does that do to our pistons? Obviously they're moving through the natural motions here. So this piston, like I was saying before, is actually slightly below bottom dead center. This is also slightly below bottom, bottom dead center. This is also slightly below, this is also slightly below. So they're all below So they're all below the true center position. Okay, so let's analyze this for a second. For cylinder one to go from TDC to its 90 degree position, which is slightly below the center line, it had to move more than 50% of the bore. For this one to move up, it actually had to move less than 50%. And then this one as well, less than 50 and then this one had to move greater than 50 once again. So theoretically, if in the same crank rotation and in the same amount of time, these two pistons had to travel a further distance, that means they're moving faster. So distance over time, simple, right? So what we have is the two pistons on the top half of the stroke are actually moving faster than the bottom. So now once these pistons continue their cycle and then say they flip over another 180, now these two are going to be moving faster in the top part of the stroke and these two are going to be moving slower. And because of that speed difference, that means that the pistons that are moving faster have more inertia so they can't fully cancel each other out. This is true for V8s, V6s, inline 6s, 4s, so anything, every engine, except for a boxer because they're actually moving opposed to each other. So the piston that is moving away is matched with another piston that's moving away. So their inertia is actually matched in that case. So those get vibrations for other reasons. So to bring this all together, the vibration in an engine is due to the fact that the pistons on the top half of the stroke have more inertia than the pistons on the bottom half of the stroke. 
So the pistons moving downward never have enough energy to cancel out the pistons moving upward. So you always have some vibration. Another way to put it is that pistons don't move in a perfect sine wave like the crankshaft is. Pistons, because of the rod angle, are actually moving like that. So this is the center of the cylinder and then the pistons actually moving faster on the top half than the bottom half. So no matter how perfectly you balance your engine, it's always going to have that buzzy vibration unless you have balance shafts or counterweight shafts or counter shafts, whatever they call them in different cars. The only thing balance shafts are doing is simulating extra mass for the bottom pistons. So these are shafts that spin at twice the speed of the crank. This is a really terrible drawing. They kind of look like camshafts, but they're not. They usually spin in opposite directions. So basically what happens with these is these spin at twice the crank speed. So every time a piston hits the bottom, which is uh, two times for one crank rotation, so when these hit the bottom and then 180, these hit the bottom. These spin at twice the speed so that any time a piston is coming down, these sync up and add some extra inertia to that downstroke. So these have to be engineered and weighted specifically for the weight of the piston, the rod angle, everything to work. So essentially you're just simulating a little bit of extra inertia for the pistons that are on their way down. Again, that's why they spin at twice the speed. So with all that said, you can have a nice smooth engine that you can rest a coin on. That's a little tiny four banger vibration machine. Um, three cylinders are another mess to talk about, but they still have the same piston speed difference. They just don't, they just cancel it out even worse because they have an odd number of pistons. But yeah, now you know why an engine vibrates.